Um, so welcome everyone to uh, the Finding Candidates Faster webinar. Um, so obviously at the moment um, everything's very unusual and we're in quite unprecedented times. So obviously it's important for you to be able to locate your candidate information as quickly as possible just to help yourselves to work as efficiently as you can no matter where you're working from. So due to this, today what we're going to be covering is the Bullhorn Find feature, uh, the basic and advanced keyword searching, and the uh, Boolean operators as well. Um, so we'll get into all of those today. Um, and then as Sarah mentioned, any questions uh, we'll either come to at the end or if we don't have time today, we'll send you those answers over as well. So we'll get around to all of those. Um, so to start off with, what we'll look at is the Bullhorn Find. Uh, this is the quickest way of being able to find a record on your system, whether it is a candidate or um, any other entity as well. Um, the Bullhorn Find, uh, that can be located at the top um, of your Bullhorn database. So you'll see the Find and the magnifying glass um, just in the top left hand corner. And all you need to do is just simply select this icon, select the find and type your search in there. Um, so, for example, if I just type in Bullhorn Buddy, which is one of my candidates and enter, that will bring up the find results of Bullhorn Buddy. That's one way of, of bringing the record up. The other way is if you select Bullhorn Buddy, type that in and actually click on the record, that will open it directly. Um, so that's the, the quickest way of finding a candidate when you know exactly their name and how to spell their name. Um, now, one thing uh, that you'll see, so as I mentioned, either you'll see the uh, records show up in the drop down here, or if you enter, then you'll find your, have your results show up in this find results list, which we'll come to in a moment. Now, with your um, with your bullhorn find, when you click into it, you'll notice that some records are showing up here in the drop down. Now, these records um, will show uh, there will be the last ten records that you've searched and accessed, and this will they will show up for you. So um, it is just on your database. So, say one of your colleagues searches someone, it's not going to show up there records as well. It's specifically the last 10 records that you have searched and accessed. So for example, if I were to type in my name, uh, Jade, uh, and then decide, oh, actually, no, it's not Jade, I want to find it's Bullhorn Buddy, uh, and then we click into it. Because with the, um, the search on the name Jade, we didn't actually access any records. When you click back into the find, you'll notice that that's not showing up, you do have to, as I say, actually access the record for it to show up in this drop down. I'll show you with a, a record I haven't previously searched just to make um, that. Yes, bullhorn. And they'll show up, and now we click into it. And then going back to the find, you'll see our previous, our last um, opened record is showing there. Um, so as I mentioned before, that's great if you know exactly how to uh, spell the, the candidate's name, but obviously that's not always going to be the case. So there's a few other ways of finding candidates that you can use this in with this fast find. Um, so one thing, and this is especially if you uh, know the candidate's ID number or the record's ID number, for example, you might have like three John Smiths on your database, uh, but you do know their ID number. So what you can do uh, is you can just type, let's uh, just type in 5094342, and this should, oh, Three, four, two. This should bring up a record. Let's try another one. Oh, yeah, Thomas Rhett. So we've got his exact ID number. You've got that there. Um, the really good thing with the ID numbers is obviously they're unique. There's not going to be any other record with that ID number. So you can just type that into the Bullhorn find and that will bring up the, the record for you straight away. And then you can open that. 
Uh, the other thing, you may not have the ID number, you know, obviously if you've got thousands and thousands of records on your system, you're not expected to remember every ID number. Um, but as I say, you might not know how to spell someone's name. So what you can do is if we just type in bullhorn into uh, the bullhorn find, this will signify to the system that this is someone's last name. So it will bring up all the records with um, bullhorn as someone's last name. Um, and also if it's your you know, uh, sorry, client records and job records also are showing up, uh, that's um, because bullhorn is referenced in those uh, titles. And if we just enter here with this find results, you'll notice that these are actually separated to do with the entity. So if we're looking at the candidates, we can see 50 candidates that all have bullhorn as the last name. Uh, what you can do as well, uh, which is a really good little feature um, within the find results, is you can change the amount of records that are actually that show up that are filtered here. Um, so because we've got so many candidates, I'm going to change that to, to 50 but you can adjust that to suit you. And the other thing as well that you might want to do, um, it, because there's obviously so many records here, you might think, okay, well, I'm looking for someone with the last name Bullhorn, uh, who's a who's a active candidate. So we put that filter on and they're a lead anchor. So let's search that. And then if we just, this will show our two records who are suitable that we want to find. So they're, have the last name Bullhorn, title lead anchor, and they've got the status of active. So you can add uh, filters onto the find results as well. And I'll just clear those filters. Now, the thing um, that you may have sort of be wondering is, I've mentioned about the last name, um, but what if you're looking for someone with Bullhorn as their first name and you want to signify that? So the best way to do this is uh, you type in the, the name, and then just add an asterisk there. Now that will denote to the system that Bullhorn is the person's first name. And then you'll see our record Bullhorn buddy is showing up there. Um, and you'll notice that all those other records that were showing up before when we weren't using the asterisks, they're not now not pulling up in our find results. So we can, can open that record. Now the other uh, things that you can use in the fast find uh, is you can also use someone's email address. Now this is really good because again going back to um, the fact that you most likely have thousands of records on your database and a lot of them may have the same names. An email address a bit like an ID number is going to be unique so that's another really good way of being able to search uh, on the uh, Bullhorn find. So if I just type in Bullhorn buddy at gmail.com uh, this will bring up that record again. Now you'll notice if you just put in part of the email address, it won't find something, uh, a candidate. You'll have to actually put in the whole uh, email address there. And then the other thing within the uh, Bullhorn find, another really good tip is that you can use people's partial names. So again, you may know someone's name, but you may not know how they spell their last name or perhaps their name is like Christine, but you can't remember if it's Christine or Christina, um, then using partial names can be a really good way of finding your candidate. And it's really quick as well, rather than trying to remember how to spell their name. Um, so if I type in, so just put in Bull and Bud, and then you'll notice that Bullhorn Buddy shows up here and our record shows up. Um, so that's really useful, as I say, especially if you can't remember the spelling, you can just type in partially their name. And the other thing as well, if you're based in the US, you can also type in people's numbers into the Bullhorn find. And again, being a, um, a unique or maybe unique, um, if it specifically if you're looking at contacts there may be contacts with the same number uh, under the same company but it will bring you up uh, and help you narrow down that search and especially if it's a candidate it's um, likely that you're just going to have the one candidate with that number on your system so that's another really good way of finding um, your candidates within the bullhorn find. 
So moving on now to the um, searching and actually running a search within the candidate list. Um, so one thing to mention at the start before you run any search is I would always recommend just checking whether you have this red clear button at the corner of your uh, list view. Uh, the reason for this is um, this would show and this would denote to us that there has already been a filter or um, of a search already run um, and then if you try to run another search on top of that that um, you know could cause no records to show up because you're kind of running a search on top of a search um, so at the moment I actually had a filter on one of my columns so before I run any search what I'll do is just clear click on that red button and clear all and what, what that will just mean is we're a completely fresh database, no, um, no filters, no searches on it already. So you can start afresh. So that's one thing I would always um, recommend checking. So to start, the best way to run your searches is you'll see on your um, list view and on your candidate list that you have this search box. Uh, now, what I'll be doing is I'll show you this from the candidate list. One thing just to mention um, is that if you were wanting to run any searches on your contact list or your job list, um, you can um, sort of apply these methods to other entities as well. Uh, candidate searching is um, a very common way of searching. You know, you want to find relevant candidates for specific roles. Uh, so that's why I'll show you it from here. But just to let you know, you can apply these methods to other entities as well. Um, so if we just click on the search box on the candidate list, you'll see here this um, section typing keywords. Uh, now this is the advanced keywords um, searching and momentarily I'll show you the basic um, searching as well, uh, but I'll go through this uh, section in the advanced first for you. Now one thing um, to mention is that the keywords it does search specific fields now the best way of knowing what fields that it's searching is if you hover over this magnifying glass um, then it will show you the seven fields that um, that the keywords will be searching in now these will be the same um, fields regardless of um, your company or your database but the one thing to mention is uh, that if you've renamed these fields, then uh, maybe your database, especially if you're based in the UK, may say CV instead of resume. Um, but they link to the same fields, but it will show up what you've actually named the fields. Um, so just in case yours looks slightly different to what you're seeing uh, on mine today. Um, but the best thing to do is if you're ever unsure what fields that you're searching, just hover over that magnifying glass and it will show you. Now within the keywords, um, what you can do is uh, type in, uh, so if I type in manager, um, what this will do is this will search for the word manager in any of these seven fields. Um, so if we run search, just click search, this will bring up um, most likely a lot of records um, because it will have manager in any of those seven fields. Now, a good thing to do and a, and a handy tip is if you're wondering how many records you're dealing with, how many you're sort of playing with, the best thing to do is to click this um, tick box and you'll see here select all and in this case it's 867 matching records and you'll know okay that's how many records that um, have the word manager in those seven fields uh, so what I'll do is um, I'll just clear that search um, before going back into the, uh, the keywords and now what you may want to do is build up um, more specific uh, search terms and um, add more keywords. So what I'll go through now before going on to the basic keywords is um, the Boolean operator, in, operator words and um, uh, punctuations that you can use in uh, this keyword search. Um, so the first one that I'll type in is manager and sales. Now, one thing to mention is that um, with the operator 
the words. I always put them in capitals. You can do use lowercase. You don't have to put them in capitals. Uh, however, I just always find it makes it much clearer and much um, more uh, obvious what the operating words are and what the keywords are, just to put it in uh, capitals and the keywords in lowercase. Um, but that's sort of a, a preference, a preference thing. Um, so if I were to run this search, which I'll do in a moment, what this will do is this will bring up any record that has the word manager and the word sales in any of these seven fields. Uh, so if I hit search and you'll notice the um, search terms are showing up here in that box, we now know that we've got that's gone down to 285 matching records. So again, I will clear that search. So one of the um, main operating words is and. The next one that you can use is or. So what this will do is this will search in these seven fields, any record which has the word manager or the word sales. So it can be either or um, it could be, so it could be both in a record or it could be one of either of them, um, but all the records that show up have to have manager or sales in them. So when I hit search, I would expect this to have much higher numbers because it's either or. Uh, and yes, so then it's um, 1,003 matching records that have manager or sales. So again, I'll just clear that. And then the last operating word that you'd want to use is not. Now, this will be... So what this will do, again, those seven uh, fields, it will bring up any record that has the word manager in it, but not the word sales. So it can't have the word sales anywhere in these seven fields. So now what I would expect is those numbers to um, be much lower. And uh, so now 582 matching records, which have manager, but not sales anywhere in those fields. So as well as those three key um, operating words, there's also um, three main uh, operating punctuations, if you like, to help you build up these searches even more um, specifically and um, to help you run uh, the exact searches that you want to. Um, so I'll write the search and then I'll kind of go through them and explain. OK, so here you'll notice we've got the parentheses or the the brackets here and what this does is this keeps a search together so it keeps you can build a search within a search and it denotes to the system that this is a search on its own uh, to work in conjunction with this so how this would work is these seven fields again uh, would look for it must have the word manager has to be manager in there and it has to have either sales or retail. So it must have one of these two words, but it doesn't matter which one, and it has to have manager. So again, we'll run that search. And again, you can see that showing up here. And we've got 296 there. Again, I'll just clear that search. Uh, the next piece of punctuation that um, you can is if we do manager so what this will do what these speech marks will do is this will denote to the system that this is a string um, so what this search will mean is that it has to have the word manager and either sales or retail, but it cannot have the phrase shop floor. So the word shop could be in these seven fields. The word floor can be there. That's absolutely fine, though. I'm not sure why they would have that, but they could. Um, but it cannot have the phrase shop floor. So now if we run that. And we've got 295. So the um, the best way to think of the um, speech marks is that it's a string and that it keeps together a phrase. And then the final um, piece of punctuation uh, to note is the wild card. Now we saw that before in the bullhorn find, um, but what this will do, so um, if we put manage and an asterisk, which is the wild card, um, once we hit search, in these seven fields, um, it 
will bring up records that either have the word manage, managing, manager, management, uh, anything that starts with manage um, it will bring up those records and that can be particularly useful you know if you're um, someone on their resume they may put that they're a manager but you might be searching the term management but the person's still relevant for the role so um, the wilds cards can be really useful for this so what i'll go on to next is the um, basic keywords now what you can do is this would depend on how you prefer to search you can either build up your searches in the way uh, that i showed you there or if we switch to basic you will see that you've got particular um, sort of sections where you can put the required words the optional or the excluded um, so if i click into here um, before you'll notice that manager was one of my required um, words so i'll type that into required now what you do have to do is you do have to just select enter uh, and that will put it together and show it in this little gray box that it just needs to be um, for the basic uh, word searching um, and then uh, i had retail and uh, then my last one was sales so this search is the manager and and then in brackets retail or sales that is the same search but we just specified on the um, basic search section um, that it's required or optional and then you know i could put shop floor in the excluded as well and then if we search that that is that same search that i did previously and then the last thing to mention about the uh, basic um searching is that you'll notice here you may have noticed that it says only search description now if we select that that will change to instead searching those seven fields that i mentioned before and we saw on the magnifying glass this will no, now only search the resume or the cv section um, so that can you know change up your search because you may not want to search the title you may not want to search um you know the name you may just want to search their um cv for for those keywords um so when you select only search description uh, i'll just hit search as you'll notice there was nothing there but the reason for that is now if we switch back to advance and hover over the magnifying glass uh, you'll see that the default searches is now changed to show you just the resume so again it's always quite good to hover over here just to make sure that you hadn't maybe selected only search description before because you'd need to change that back just by unchecking that Perfect. So that's um, all the uh, information that I wanted to go through today. Uh, so I'll now hand back to Sarah for a quick Q&A. Perfect. Thanks, Jade. Our first question is, how can I save a search that I'm running quite frequently? Yeah, sure. So um, what I'll do is I'll run a search myself um, just to uh, show you the best way to do that. So I'll just hit manager uh, and then hit search. Now, if you're running a search really regularly, instead of having to remember, say, every month exactly what you're putting in, what you can do is when you first run that search, once you've run it, if you hit this favourites drop down, uh, and then you'll see in here, these are actually favourites that have already been saved. But if we go to save this search and then just type test. Now, if you've got it set to private, this will be so that only you can see this saved search, which you might just want to have to save sort of uh, the list on everyone's uh, favorites getting too long. Uh, but if you want to share this search with other people, just hit public. You can either share it with everyone, you can share it to a specific group or department, or you can share it with just specific uh, users. So say, for example, if I type in, uh, Colleen I could select my um, colleague Colleen and when I save that uh, it would be shared between myself and my colleague uh, so what I'll do is if I just hit save and I'll just save that test for now uh, clear that and then say a month's gone by and you want to run that set that uh, search again just hit favorite hit test and then your search will come up again great 
Next question is, will Bullhorn automatically save my most recent searches if I want to go back to them? Uh, yes, so um, you may have noticed when I hit this search box that there's this tab up the top that says recent. Now, if we click on there, our top, my last um, 10 searches, my last 10 searches will all show here um, in the recents. It will just show 10, a bit like with the Bullhorn find, and it will just show your own, again, similar to the Bullhorn find. It won't show other people in your um, using the same database as you but this is obviously really useful say if you're running a search today and then something comes up so you have to clear your filters uh, then tomorrow you can just go into here and think oh yeah it was about a uh, quarter to three when I ran it so let's just hit that and that brings up the same search again all right next question is once I have run a search, is there a way to see a quick view of a candidate's profile or will I need to click the entire profile to view the information? Uh, yes, so the um, what you can do and what I'll show you now is you can actually use these uh, binoculars to see certain bits of information. You can also, another thing you can do is add specific columns to your list. So, you know, from running that search, we can see with Claire Maddox, her status and her title. Um, but if we hit these binoculars, uh, then this will bring up uh, a details tab where you can see any tasks, submissions, you know, interviews, a bit of a, a summary about her. Uh, you can click onto the notes. Um, if you have the LinkedIn uh, RSC integration set up, you've got that. And you can also see their resume. Uh, the other good thing with this is you've may have noticed there's this actions drop down so again instead of having to click into everyone's record one by one you can just click the binoculars and add a note from here or add a submission from here which will speed up uh, your process and um, sort of save a few clicks which adds up you know after a while awesome next question is what is the score column um, sorry, uh, you just cut out there. Sorry about that. What is the score column measured by? Yes, yeah, sure. So this score column, um, there's a bit of uh, sort of maths behind the scenes here that um, brings this up. But um, if I just hit this help section and what you can do is with this score, uh, column you can actually yourselves log to the help and any uh, information any documentation you can see here but I'll bring this up to show you as I, as I go through it as well um, but with the score um, the candidate score there's as I say a, a little bit of maths um, that's been coded and uh, basically this is determined as you can see here by um, how fre frequently your search terms come up so something like manager like I was searching today that's going to be quite a common search term um, so it like with this example here you know it, it could be in the um, the CV maybe or the resume maybe six eight times um, and so it, they'll be higher up with their school whereas someone that doesn't have manager is going to be or maybe just has manager once um, they're going to be have a lower school um, this does change slightly depending on how um, common your search term is so again like I was saying manage or manager is quite common but something like maybe JavaScript may be less common or HTML or something like that um, so that would change the uh, the score as well um, but what I would recommend to anyone wondering um, exactly um, how that works out just there's some more information here uh, if you go to the help and, and type in score awesome so I'm going to end the webinar there, actually, because I think we're out of time. But as a reminder, we will be sharing the webinar recording with all attendees within the next 24 to 48 hours. So you can expect that in your email. And we're also up in a separate email for any questions that we didn't have time to cover in the Q&A, because I know that we got a bunch that we didn't have time to get to today. So just shared your questions will be answered. Um, as mentioned before, we're also going to be hosting a series of training webinars focused on obstacles your company may be facing in today's economy, and those can be found at www.bullhorn.com slash COVID-19 offers. Just to read it again, that's www.bullhorn.com slash COVID-19 offers. 
that information will be included in the follow-up email as well in case you didn't get it. For additional training resources, don't forget to log into the Learning Hub through the customer community at help.bullhorn.com. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining.